Clements, thanks very much for, for joining us. Obviously, big focus on sustainability um, at Redevco. Um, I, I guess, how are you seeing the, the impact of the health crisis? Do you see that as an accelerator? I mean, certainly for, from our perspective, there's been a lot more focus on sustainability in ESG. Undoubtedly, uh, the health crisis has uh, has brought into sharp focus that uh, you know the impact of, of external factors on uh, our lives uh, can come in very unexpected ways, and our own activities, our own uh, existence on this planet, also has impact on the planet, and, and uh, we have to start being very uh, conscious and aware about how we operate and the things that we do. Um, sustainability, uh, especially the environmental side of sustainability, has been getting a lot of attention over the past, let's say, five years uh, since uh, the Paris Agreement in, in 2015. The health crisis in the last uh, six to, to nine months has brought a much greater focus on, on social topics, the impact of uh, health and well-being and the importance of health and well-being for, for all of us. And, and what role does that you know, play or what, what role the buildings play in, in helping to, uh, to provide a, a health and, and a healthy and safe um, environment for, for people to live in and to operate in. And on a practical um, level, Clemens, I guess, how does somebody like Redevco um, push that forward, um, particularly given that you'll have a portfolio of buildings, um, some of varying ages? It starts with an ambition. Um, I think we uh, we clearly see that uh, we have a responsibility to act. Uh, we want to be a leader in on on, on these topics uh, and and do our bit uh, to contribute to a uh, healthier, more sustainable uh, built environment for all. And our ambition ultimately is to to deliberately future proof our assets whilst under our stewardship uh, for as long as we may, may hold them. Uh, make uh, improvements to those assets. Um, so that they are uh, more future-proof, uh, both uh, financially, economically, uh, but also uh, environmentally and, and having a, a positive social impact. So across the board, looking at how we can do things uh, with our assets uh, to, to contribute. And I think, you know, it starts with setting an ambition. And we've set uh, a mission 2040, whereby we want to uh, ensure that our entire portfolio is net zero carbon by 2040. And that is going to be a tough journey, but we're going to work on it, uh, asset by asset, uh, initiative by initiative, uh, and, and see how far we get. And my understanding, Clemens, is, is that you've sort of, um, you've, you've looked at this um, and selected kind of four signature projects. Um, so I, I guess what led to that, that decision? Um, and I suppose what's the strategy behind that? Well, net zero carbon buildings um, sound great in theory. Uh, the challenge is how do you make that work in practice? And even though there are already examples of uh, super efficient buildings uh, out there, we don't have them yet in our own portfolio. And part of the approach to, to really embedding this uh, in our own organization is to, to show to our own colleagues uh, what's possible. And uh, these so-called signature projects are really intended to help um, increase the understanding uh, of what's needed, uh, show that it is possible, and, and as a result, kind of inspire uh, all of us uh, within Redefco and within our network and, and our, with our partners and, and hopefully also others in, in the sector. You know, if you show it's possible, then others can also get cracking and, uh, and, and contribute as well. I mean, that's interesting. And you mentioned there that there's got to be practical steps. Um, so, uh, uh, Radevka, what are you doing? What are those practical steps, I guess, to, to, to get you from here um, to, to 2040? So in the end, uh, the route we've chosen is to align our activities with um, the World Green Building Council's uh, Advancing Net Zero program. And the four discrete steps on that journey um, are, are, are quite clear. Uh, first off, you have to measure and disclose uh, you know, your, your energy consumption and uh, carbon emissions uh, of your portfolio. Um, so we're working very hard on that uh, with um, our partner Fabric you know, to make that a robust and a reliable data set to allow us to report and to show progress. Um, secondly, uh, and, and most importantly with our assets, it's all about reducing energy uh, consumption. And that means that whenever we are uh, optimizing an asset, redeveloping an asset, working with a, uh, a potential new tenant. Uh, we want to very explicitly do whatever we can 
uh, to make that asset as uh, energy efficient as possible and make very deliberate choices around um, design, materials, uh, installations, um, as well as uh, you know the, the, the heating sources that are being used uh, in those assets. The third step is that energy consumption should be produced as much as possible by on-site or off-site renewable sources. So uh, we are also now embarking on a program to install uh, as much on-site uh, renewable energy generation uh, on our buildings as possible. Um, we've launched a, a, a project called Project Solar uh, as, as, a, as a first initiative to put as many uh, solar uh, installations on the roofs of our uh, assets in, in Belgium. And from there, we will uh, expand that uh, hopefully to uh, the rest of the, the European portfolio. And then sort of the last step in the process is all around starting to, to look at uh, a more holistic view of, of, of the buildings, a whole life carbon view, uh, looking also at embodied carbon. So uh, when we are redeveloping assets, how do you make sure that you are making, again, deliberate choices around the types of material uh, in, in your buildings uh, to try and lock in uh, and, and keep you know, carbon uh, in the structure as, as, as much as possible, but that, it, that it's sequestered for a long time. And I think our signature projects, especially coming back to that, uh, would allow us to really experiment and to, to learn on the journey how we can do that and what kinds of choices we will be faced with and, uh, and, and what seems to work and what will help us on that journey to, to get to net zero carbon by 2040. It's a really interesting um, project, I, I think, Clements. Um, thanks very much for, for sharing that with us today. Clements. Happy to do so. Thank you, Richard.